everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. Today, as you can see, we are back with our sample website. I've been having a lot of fun building this out, so we are going to continue with it today. Um, and the topic for today is CSS Grid, which is a new-ish display um, for CSS, and it's kind of complicated, so I'll probably continue this next week with not in our sample website, but in more of a just demonstration just a demo, um, just to show all the different things Grid can do. But we are going to use Grid today to build out this About page. So I've renamed everything. I think I'm going to stop naming things based on what we're doing and just have one, one file for the website. So as you can see, the CSS file is now just called My Style. And all I've done here is add, I've created this About page and linked to it in the navigation. So if we click over here to About, you can see it's just empty right now. We have our header as we have been dealing with and then the content. So same place we started last time, but we're going to create a little about section for our sample website. And the way grid works is it makes um, a container, a grid container, and then everything inside of that container are grid items that you can place within the grid. And it's just great because float, as you saw in past weeks, kind of it can give you some problems when resizing and, and it's not always exactly what you want where a grid is very specific, it's very straightforward um, as you'll see. So I'm just gonna start out by creating a couple divs in here. I think I'm gonna do two different divs. Both of them will have the grid display. I'm gonna give this one an ID of story and this one an ID of team. So my vision here is say this website has like a mission statement and a history of the organization or whatever and then a team down here with like team member bios for the people who work for this company or something so in the story div i'm going to add two divs a lot of divs here but this is this is how we can target things as containers really easily so this one is going to be mission and this one is going to be history okay and then i think i'm just going to go back to our home page here and copy just some lorem ipsum just some filler text copy this and then let's give it an h2 our mission and then a paragraph of lorem ipsum and it'll be very similar down here, you know, our story or whatever. And a paragraph of filler text. Save this. All right, we have that div with a couple divs inside of it. Bear with me here. Um, and then for the team one, I think I'm going to have... Let's give this IDs, actually. ID of member one close it and I'm just gonna copy and paste this four times we will have four member divs and it'll be like a bio in each one member three member not 14 four okay so this div no, this one, this story div has two divs within it. Those will be our grid items. And then this one will have four. I'm just gonna build this out with some photos and some filler text and I will be right back here then to turn them into a grid and I'll show you how that's done. So as you can see, each member div 
just has a headshot and a little sentence that would, I imagine, just be a little mini bio about each team member. So we have our, our page. We have to style these images like we always do to make them smaller. Let's just go ahead and save this. Make sure our page is linked to my styles, which it is. Let's open this up and I'm just going to close up these media queries that we did a few weeks ago and then stick these styles right in here. So maybe let's start by styling these headshots just because <laughs> that kind of thing kind of bugs me. So um, let's just give them a width of 50% of their container because we're going to make their container smaller. Um, I don't know if the float from earlier in our style sheet is going to apply. Let's find out. Um, well, they look, they look like they're working just fine. I think that's all we'll want to do with them. Okay. That was just a small thing. Now we're going to get into grid. So what we want to do is target our containers and set their display to grid. So remember our containers are story and team. So, I mean, we can probably target them together. Actually, I'm going to do them differently because they're going to have different templates. So, story display is grid and team display is grid. Let me refresh. Nothing should be different. Oh, see, are these floating? I want to remove all those other styles I had. Um, I guess I'll remove them. I think I margined them when I originally put images in to this. Yeah, okay. So now those are blank. So now these two paragraphs here are in one container, and then down here, these four sections for each member of the team, those are each a grid element in this grid down below. So let's start with the story grid, where it's all the information about this imaginary company. So what we want to do, I'm going to use the template way of styling these. You can use grid to um, just select rows and columns and have things span rows and columns, but I'm going to do kind of what I think is the coolest part of grid, which is you can name your sections and then give them put that area where you want it anyway. So since there's two, we can use grid template columns. I think that's what I want to do because I want it to be two columns and I want them each to be, let's just say 45% of the container. Yeah, okay, that's what I wanted to do. Because there's only two, there's not really a point of using the areas. When you have more elements, you want to do it that way. All right, and something else you can do once your display is grid is do grid gap. And you can do a column gap and row gap separately, or you can just do grid gap, which is going to be equal all the way around. And I'm going to do like 5%. So that will should put 5% of the width of our container between these two. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And then just to make this look nice, I think I'm going to just text align center. Beautiful. OK, so now for this team grid container, I want to set each member div to be its own grid area. Here's where we're going to use area. So let's do member one grid area. Let's just call it member one. And I'm going to repeat this for each one because I gave them all IDs, member one, member two. And I'm just going to give the grid area name. This is a lot more intuitive when, say, you have a section you want to call header, a section you want to call sidebar, a section you want to call footer, and then you can assign them grid areas, and then within the grid, tell those areas which grid areas to span. But we're just going to apply it to what we need. And I just want each member to have their own grid area. Member four will be grid area member four. Okay, so now these all have names. I'm going to go in here to this team, which is our container div, remember. And now we're going to use grid template areas. 
And here's where each row is going to have the area spanning it. Actually, I might give title. Did I name the title? Yeah, I gave it the ID of title. I'm going to give that one a grid area name too. Save that. So at the top of this section, we want, I think we're just going to do a four by four grid. So there's two columns, or I'm sorry, two by two. It'll be because we have four sections. So title is going to span the whole top. And then this row, I want to be member one, member two. And this row, I want to be member three, member four, just space separated and end with a semicolon. Now, if we refresh, my title didn't work. Grid area title. Oh, maybe it is. I just have to center it. So text align center. If we save that, yeah, it spans across the whole thing. So you see what I mean? I think if we can inspect this, you'll see where the grid comes into play. There we go. So you see the title meet the team spans both columns and then each member grid area is in its spot. And over here in our CSS, we actually don't need to have these on separate lines. I just thought that would be helpful because it's row, row, and row. But because they're separated with single ticks, they can be all on one line. They have to have their ticks though. And the spaces don't matter. I'm going to close this developer here. All the same. All right, now I think I might just do a couple things just for looks, just a couple cosmetic things. This is the functionality I wanted. This is a grid that has two items. They're each 45% of, of the grid. And this one allows us to set the grid however we want. And we could um we could set this a different way. Let's say we want it to be, you know, three columns and we want member three here. So let me break this up so you can see what I mean. So here title is gonna span three rows. Then the first three members are each gonna have their own spot in the second row. And then let's say we want member four to span the whole third row. If we refresh this, you'll see it does it. It does whatever we tell it to. But we had it how we wanted it, like this. Now I think I just want to target the H2s in here. Let's do story H2 and team descendant of H2. Um, I kind of just want the, the border that I had on my form that we did last week. So remember our contact page over here is a form. I just want this border, which is, oh, that's not going to be in here. It's going to be in my styles. So if I just find my rule targeting form here, I want this border. Remember, it's two pixels. It's solid and it's that semi-transparent pink color. I'm just going to copy that, roll back down here to my header headers. I'm going to save this and go back to about. You can see now they have a nice border and it looks pretty nice. They're not really even though, so I might just give these a width. Let's go 95% again. That looked good for the text. And save that. Pretty good. And I'm going to do a padding as well. Just like a 2% padding. So then between the border and the text, there'll be a little bit more space. Beautiful. And of course, there's more we could do lining these up and play around with it. But this is just a quick example of the power of grid and how I think it makes more sense to have things organized like this in containers with grids. But like I said, I think next week I will continue with grid and sort of break things down, not with so much content, just with blocks to demonstrate the power of grid. Really, you guys, I I 
wish that I was better at explaining this, but CSS Grid is really exciting. And I saw a really great talk at WordCamp Europe. I want to say it was last year. Morton Rand Hendrickson did a talk on Grid that got me so fired up. It's why I went to WordCamp Atlanta this year. It's kind of why I'm so excited about web development. I'll link that down below. And I did see another talk on CSS Grid at WordCamp Atlanta last month. Um, the name of the presenter is escaping me, but I can link to his site too. He has a lot of just fun examples of what you can do with Grid. And I'll link both of those in the description down below. But anyway, that's about it for my initial demonstration of CSS Grid. Look out for another one next week. But remember, I post every Wednesday. So I will see you next week for another Web Dev Wednesday. Thanks, you guys.